Welcome to Faith Issues, Catholic Diocese of Onsoka. Today is Friday, Friday after Ash Wednesday. We are reflecting on the question the disciples of John the Baptist put to Jesus. And the question is, why is it that we and the group of the Pharisees fast and your disciples do not? When Jesus gave the answer, he said that the bridegroom attendant does not fast when the bride is still with them. Until when the bride is taken away, they will fast. In this question, we shall be looking at the theological implication, the theological exegesis of the answer. Does it mean that Jesus placed down on fasting as a religious virtue? No. Number one, traditionally the Jews fast twice a week. They fast on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. According to St. Thomas Akempis, uh, it takes the subjection of the body for the soul to grow. And the Jews believe that it takes the discipline of the body for the soul to grow. So they keep fast twice. So the disciples of John the Baptist were actually correct by asking him the question, why is it that we fast? And the members of the Pharisees or the group of the Pharisees fast and your disciples do not fast. So Jesus' answer number one shows that uh, it is only in, in the Lord that you, you find the joy. But before I expatiate on that, there is a tradition of the Jews when a bridegroom, a bride and a groom, when they get married newly, they normally set apart one week for uh, enjoyment. Within that one week, you, the friends of the bride and the groom used to come around. They come around to share in their joy. They come around to share in their pleasantries. They come around to felicitate fel with them. So when Jesus said that the bridegroom attendant does not fast with them, when the bride is still with them, until when that, that uh, bride is taken away, they will fast. Jesus, in this answer, likened himself to the bridegroom. And uh, there are also people who visit this bride and groom who are newly married. They are called children of the bride chambers. Children of the bride chambers. So Jesus, in this answer, likens his apostles to the children of the bride chambers. Those who come to enjoy with the bride and the groom who are newly married. So in this answer, Jesus was actually telling the disciples of John, one, that true joy comes from the Lord. It is only in the Lord that you have lasting joy. No wonder the psalmist says in Psalm 16, verse 11, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and happiness forever. Even the psalmist in Psalm 27, verse 4, say, no, I, my happiness comes when I dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So you, you can see from this biblical allusion that true happiness actually comes from God. It is only in the Lord that you will have lasting joy. Every other joy that comes from outside of the Lord is time-bound, is limited, is ephemeral, it is, it is short-lived. Two, John at that time was in prison. So by asking that question, the disciples of John were actually telling Jesus, in this condition of ours, your disciples are enjoying and we are mourning. So by Jesus' answer, he said, the condition you are experiencing now will later be experienced by my own disciples. By the time I will be apprehended by the Jews, the chief priests and the scribes, by the time I will be taken away from them, they will be in the same condition you are. Then they will fast. So by that answer, he is also reminding the disciples, do you see the condition of the, of the disciples of John the Baptist? Very soon it will be your own turn when I will be taken away from you. Jesus also, the third point in this episode, we see Jesus also. He is so courageous about death. Not minding the pleasantness, the joy he shares with, the, with his, his own apostles. He was seeing the cross coming. He was never afraid. His gaze, his mind, his consciousness was ever on the cross. 
He knew the cross was coming, but he was courageous. We Christians who follow the master, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, be looking unto me, the author and finisher of your faith, we fo who follow him, should those still not be frightened in moments of crisis and tribulations, in moments of trials, we should try to maintain our stand as Christians. The cross is never a threat to a Christian. The cross is never a threat to a Christian. Christians maintain temporal happiness here, but we Christians are not afraid of the cross. The cross may come in any dimension. In families, it can come as a setback. It can come as a sickness. It can come from any dimension at all. But every Christian should stand firm in moments of trials, in moments of tribulations, Christians should stand firm. Just as Jesus was not afraid of the cross, he saw the cross coming, but he maintained his stand. We who are followers of Jesus should also not be afraid of our own different crosses. Instead, we should take the cross and follow Jesus. I read a book, I've forgotten the author. It said that, um, that uh, Christians are identified with four things. <clears throat> Number one, that uh, a Christian is identified with faith. Faith makes a Christian. Then, uh, his life on earth confirms him as one. Faith makes a Christian. His life on earth, the way he goes about his Christian activity, identifies it alone. Then, trials confirms him. Then, death crowns him. So, we see in moments of trial, many Christians who have gone very far, those who are already with degree, masters, PhD, in spiritual life, only fall away in moments of crisis. Jesus saw the crisis coming. He saw the cross coming, but he was very firm. He continued to maintain the relationship, to maintain serious relationship with his father. I think that the only way to survive, to survive trials is to make sure that we are connected, always connected with the master. Any Christian who carries his cross following Jesus we never be disappointed. Any Christian who maintains his spiritual look, his spiritual gaze on Jesus, will never be disappointed. So Jesus did not play down the virtue of fasting. No. He himself fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He was actually trying to tell the disciples of John what true fasting means. And what true fasting means, especially at this moment of Lenten season, is that when we, when we fast, we must maintain good relationship with our brothers and sisters. We should not keep malice because we are fasting. We should not be at enmity with our brothers and sisters. And we should not make our life so miserable or live a certain kind of acrimonious life because we are fasting. So fasting that pleases God is a true fast. No wonder Joel chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 said, Tear apart your heart and not your garments. At this Lenten season, I enjoy you. Let us follow the master. We are being schooled by the master every day. So serious consciousness of this period will always link us with the master if we continue to be connected to him. Thank you.